Hey everyone, Johnny here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be explaining the difference between simple interest and compound interest. And we're going to be using this example of me saving $100 with the bank. Okay, so I'm going to put $100 in my bank account. And we all know that if you put money in a bank account, you are going to earn interest. Okay, so the bank will pay me back some kind of interest. This is not the only situation in which a simple interest or compound interest problem would arise. It's not always with the bank. It's not always to do with you saving money or borrowing money with a bank. It, there could be other situations. But to simplify it down, I'm going to actually just use this basic example of me saving $100 into a bank account and I'm going to earn interest which is money that I'm earning on top. This is on top of the $100. Okay, so when I go back to the bank to collect my money, because they were basically storing my money for me, I'm not only going to receive $100, I'm going to receive a little more because the bank will pay me interest. They will reward me for entrusting my money with the bank. I've allowed the bank to go and use my money for whatever they want to do with my money and I've gone without my money, right? So I have gone for a period of time without my $100 and therefore the bank has to pay me a little bit extra to incentivize me to leave my money with them so they'll pay me interest. The question then becomes what type of interest am I earning? Is it simple interest or is it compound interest? And these two forms of interest have different formulas associated with them, okay, that you would use to calculate how much your investment, we'll call it, even though you're just saving money into a bank account, that is still technically a type of investment, right? That's where you put money somewhere to try and grow the size of that money, to grow the size of the saving in this case, right? And the bank's going to pay me that. If we want to calculate the amount of interest, we have to first figure out whether they were paying us simple interest. They could pay us simple interest or they could pay us compound interest. And this is not something you have to really figure out. It will be clear from the terms of the loan or the terms of the deposit that you make with the bank. Okay, so here's the difference. If I had invested $100 with the bank and they were paying me simple interest, and let's say for this example that they were paying in both situations, they were paying on top of the $100, I shouldn't do a dollar sign here, they are paying 10% per annum, that means per year in interest. And I'm going to leave my money with the bank for three years. So I'm going to the bank once, I'm going there one day, let's say at the start of the year, and I'm going to go back in three years time to collect my money along with the interest, the money on top. So I'm expecting more than $100 when I go back to the bank. If they were paying me simple interest, here's what would happen. In year one, that is after year one. So say my money's been in the bank for one year, they are going to pay me 10% on the $100. Because I'd given them $100, they promised me 10%, which means they're going to give me 10% of that amount in interest, right? Which is going to equal $10. I made an extra $10 that year because they paid me 10% of the principal, right? This is called the principal, that's the principal. That's the initial amount you invest or borrow. And they've given me $10. So the total amount of my investment now is $110. But what happens in year two? Remember, after two years, I haven't gone back to the bank. I had only given them that initial $100. So after two years, what they're going to do is they're going to give me 10% because this is the interest rate for the whole three years in this example. And they are going to give me 10% of $100 still. It's the same principle. They're going to keep giving me $100 times 10% each time, even though the amount of money that they owe me is technically $110. They owe me $110 after one year. Because not only do they owe me the $100 I borrowed, but they now owe me $10 already that I could have gone and collected as interest. 
So the value of my investment, of my savings right now, is $110 after one year. And then despite that, in the second year, they're still only going to pay me 10% on the initial $100. They are not giving me 10% of the new amount that I have saved with them based on the interest I already earned. So just remember with simple interest, you're only ever earning interest on the original amount saved or borrowed. They do not update that amount each year. So again, I earn $10, which means the total amount of my investment right now is $120. Let's say I still don't go back to the bank. So my money, my initial $100 is still in the bank. Plus the bank has actually paid me $10 twice now, but they haven't actually given me that money. That has just added to the account that I have with them. Okay, so imagine that the bank said, hey, after one year, we owe you $10. I said, just add it to the $100 that I initially paid you. Okay, so I don't touch that $10 interest each time. I just say, add it to the account. Add it to what I have in my savings. So right now, my savings account is $120 after two years. And despite that, they're not going to give me 10% interest on that 120, they are going to still give me 10% interest on the initial $100. It's still based on that original principle, right? The initial amount. So there's no updating. So again, I'm left with $10 in interest, which means the total, the end total that I make is $130. When I go back to the bank in three years' time, they hand me 130. But just keep in mind, this is the crucial distinction. They've only been paying me 10% of the same $100 that I put in at the start, and they have never adjusted that, even though technically the amount I had saved with them each year was growing. I technically had $110 after one year with them, and yet they didn't pay me 10% of the $110, they only paid me the 10% of the original amount. So it doesn't seem quite that fair when you look at it like that. But compound interest is a much better option here. This is at least from the perspective of the person who saved the money. If you're the one who's borrowed the money from the bank, then you would like simple interest because it means you are not having to pay more interest each year because they're updating that amount. But in reality, that's not really what will happen if you borrow money from the bank using a credit card or a mortgage, you are going to be dealing with this form of interest. This is the more popular, this is the more popular form of interest, compound interest. Here's what will happen in this scenario. Remember, you've still borrowed, or sorry, you've still saved $100, still getting 10% and you're leaving the money in there for three years. Okay, but here's what's going to happen. The first year, of course, they're going to give you 10% of the $100 you saved with them. So that means you make $10, which means the total value of your savings now is $110. But in the second year, here's what happens. This is the interesting part. You still get the 10% interest rate because that rate is the same for three years, but it doesn't multiply by $100. Instead, what happens is because the amount of money you have saved with the bank is not $100 anymore because you earned $10, which then added to the $100, the amount of money you have saved with the bank as of the second year and for that full year was 110. So they update, they update the amount that you have saved with them and they will calculate the interest accordingly. So the crucial word here is that from 100 to 110, they have updated, they have renewed they update the principal. So they don't just keep giving you 10% based on that initial amount because technically you have updated that amount because the $100 has become 110 in the second year, they'll give you 10% of the 110. So that's much better for you as someone who's saving money because guess what? 10% of 110 is $11. So instead of only making $10 in the second year, you make $11, which means the total value of your savings after two years is $121, not $120. After three years, or 
after the third year, you again get the 10% interest applied, but it's going to apply not to $100, not to $110, but hopefully you could guess to $121. So we have this update again. So it's going to update each year in this example. Sometimes the amount updates every month. If the interest compounds monthly, then the bank will assess your interest and give you interest every month, in which case the amount will change every month, not every year. That just depends on what the question actually says. But in this case, we're assuming that the bank is going to pay you that interest every year. Just note that sometimes it will be every month and then you need to make those adjustments. But here, we're going to get 10% of $121, which is $12.10, which means the total amount of our investment after three years is $133.10. So, which interest would you prefer? Well, if I put my money into a bank account for three years and I had to choose between simple or compound interest, it's rare that you get a choice though, I would choose compound interest. Thankfully, that's the one you normally get anyway. But see how you make $133.10. Your total interest there is $33.10. That's greater than the $30 of interest you made under the simple interest plan. So that's the difference. The key difference is that when someone is calculating interest in accordance with a compound interest formula, what they're really doing is they are updating the amount to which interest is applied every period that you are getting interest uh, paid to you. So here it goes from $100 to $110 to $121. You get 10% each time, but the amount is growing. It is compounding. So you're going to end up with more money. And that's the key difference between simple interest and compound interest. And that is reflected in the two formulas, which you can see in more detail in our other videos. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, if you got some value from it and subscribe to the channel and please leave any comments below if you have any questions or thoughts on this. Look forward to seeing you in the next video otherwise.